Hello everyone, welcome to the Land Tamer stream. It is Thursday night, Friday Eve, as we like to say, day 420. And yeah, they did it, three boosters. Oh, and some lab stuff. Yeah, I, I am really sorry about uh, last night. I'm not sure what happened. I had no audio, apparently. I do have confirmed audio today, apparently, it seems. So, uh, but yeah, I just got finished. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to stream because I was watching the SpaceX launch. It's actually still ongoing. Um... And I realize my lighting's not the best, but anyway, um, yeah, what what a great job! Three boosters. I just I just saw a tweet. Uh, it's hilarious. And Elon, we trust, but yeah, they landed all three boosters successfully. Uh, it was a great feat of engineering to watch. Amazing. Um, yeah, yesterday I had what I thought were some interesting thoughts. At least me rambling on about uh, Tony E's recent stream two nights ago. Where he announced, you know, his live his results from his lab exam, and what a great idea to stream those live, you know, involving the community and, and his family and everything else. That was that was pretty awesome, and I was I'm inspired. I guess I'll have to do the same thing now. <laughs> I don't know if I can wait a week. Maybe I'll wait a couple of days. Uh, but it was a great stream. One one sort of highlight for me that I talked about a little bit last night too was that you didn't hear was the amazing, uh, or he noted about the um, difficulty of the diag section of the exam. Hey, Mark Milo, good to see you. Doing great, man. Just watched a great feat of engineering, SpaceX landing, uh, Falcon Heavy. Uh, but yeah, the, the diag, I'd say when I took, you know, at Cisco Live, I did the walk-in self-paced labs where they give you an opportunity to... Um, really experience what each each part is like so you know you can do a troubleshooting I, he passed that by the way he said he got a pass fail fail so the second part the diag was a fail and i have to say when i took that in now the diag i think is of course supposed it's designed to be 30 minutes long i think they give you sort of a half of that at the walk-in cell pace labs they give you like a 15 minute equivalent sort of a diag part of the exam but it's very realistic it's very much like the real diag that's why i'm just going to be a total anti i mean not total but i'm going to be somewhat of an anti-social person and just hitting those walk-in self-paced labs at cisco live this year i'm going to hit hit them so hard take retake basically i'm going to leave my lab when i finish and go back in line to go take it again uh it's going to be my disney you know um, but it was hard. Diag was kind of the most shocking part of, I kind of expected what I saw in the other components, the configuration and the troubleshooting. The Diag was just, I mean, it's literally fire hose. Like they send you so much information and give you very little time to come up with the diagnosis. It's very difficult. But it's its own thing. And, and, you know, real life can be like that sometimes. When people come at you with problems, a lot of people come at you once and some of their information is bad or it's not purposely, but it's misrepresentative. And that's what you get in the Diag. I mean, you get just tons of emails, reports, information, um, you know, show, uh, show tech support. Uh, Tons of information, and you have very little time to sort of give your assessment. Uh, so that's that was kind of a warning to me. Like, I know Tony's very sharp. I've watched him lab, and um, he felt like he made a few mistakes, uh, you know, human mistakes during the config, but I'm sure that going past those mistakes, I'm sure he'll get the config next time. But the diag is, is tough. I know it is. Um, so at least for me. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be difficult. So point taken at Cisco Live this year, I'm going to hit the Diag exam hard, the the walk-in self-paced lab for Diag. Uh, what I've been working on all week long, and today I finally made some really good progress, is I'm, I'm building my own lab. So from the INE workbook, from network lessons, there were good labs in there. None of them really gave me what I needed and and I've tried to avoid making my own labs because it could be just a time suck. I mean, it can really take you off your course from what you need to do. But in this section is just 
has been difficult. QS is notoriously hard. And I felt like, okay, I need to put some of these concepts together and do my own lab such that I can say that I understand what is happening. And um, there's an actual scenario I need to resolve. There's something I, I want to do actually on my day job. So I'm sort of combining two functions. I, I'm, I've been prepping for a, a scenario, a QS scenario that I want to put into practice, but I'm labbing it, but I'm also learning it all at the same time. And basically what I have is, this is, this is essentially what my lab is. I, I've got a PC issue right now. I can't seem to stream and run my local lab at the moment, um, but we'll get that fixed before the weekend. But here's what's happening. So I have a router one and I have iPerf on a Linux box. That is connected to router one. It is connected to router two, which is connected to uh, another iPerf Linux one, as well as iPerf Linux two. So I've got, I'm sending traffic and a lot of this had to do, my frustration the last couple of days was the, were the subtleties and nuances of iPerf. I finally got it figure out, figured out to an extent to where I can use it for this particular scenario, right? So what I was able to do is run iPerf without any uh, shaping or policing. And I'm talking about on this link right here between router one and router two, right? Cisco QoS. Um, I've got that working. I've been able to put policing on router two input, right? So we'll just say policing, policing in, and, and that effectively breaks iPerf. Is an alternative to Ostinato, I take it. Uh, I believe so. iPerf is probably, Ostinato is probably better to be using in this scenario. Um, I've just, I've used iPerf in the past. Um, yeah, it's just a free, it's like a single package you have to install. Um, and it just works. Um, so yeah, I probably will move on to Ostinato though. Because I, I spent too much time like, messing with iperf to get it to to, to to where I finally figured out um, enough to do what I want to do. So anyway, I put a policing policy in this interface on router 2, and that broke iperf trying to send at a certain rate, right? It just it couldn't handle it. Um, yes, yeah, always good to have returns. Absolutely, man. And then on router 1, I did shaping out these are just basic concepts, right? But I don't know. I just couldn't seem to get these to work the way I thought they would. Now they are. Okay. So that's great. This is, uh, by the way, no sub-interfaces here yet. Um, but what I want to do, I cannot get that all to one line, can I? Oh, I didn't, I guess not supposed to be. So what I want to do here is um, and I got this set up right before the SpaceX thing, but essentially I want to take router one's interface here and split this into two sub interfaces. And then on this side, I'm going to have, um, v VRFs, right? And I'm going to have two BGP instances. Basically, this is kind of like what I'm trying to do with, uh, express route because with express route and Azure, if you want to do private peering and Microsoft peering on the same circuit, which is very easy to do, uh, those essentially become sub-interfaces on your router. And they're completely separate routing instances on the Azure side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, two VRFs here, and I'm going to peer on this router. I'm going to peer BGP with this instance, and I'm going to peer with this instance. And I want to apply a parent policy here, shaping policy. And then I'm going to funnel traffic through both sub interfaces to these different iPerf listeners over here. And we're going to see what happens. Now, 
as I understand it, the parent policy should shape all the traffic on this link. Uh, I, I want to see it happen, though. Like, I want to see... Like, I don't know all the mechanics of how it is doing that. If you configure the child policies here. Um, also, how is it... If you don't set any individual policies on the sub-interfaces, how is it determining what the shape? I guess it's just FIFO, first in, first out, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to do look at the nuances of that. I want to understand that. One, because I want to implement something like this. And two, this is exactly what I'm studying right now. So that's what I've got coming up. Um, I will be, whether I get that working or not tomorrow and demonstrate it out uh, tonight or tomorrow, this Saturday I will be, um, I'm going to show it on stream either way. Because we may use that to... We may use that same topology to, to do some of these other uh, QoS labs that are in the INE workbook. So that is the plan. A couple of meat chunks I shared last night. This is a great uh, link. If you didn't see it last night, of course, you didn't hear me talk about it because no audio, but um, great link about some particularly interesting BGP scenarios this blogger ran across, which I, I really appreciate. And then, let's see, let me check this link to make sure. AWS versus Azure, I think, is the, this link. This is a really good link done by uh, Daniel Dibb over... He has done some projects, and he actually approached me, and I couldn't really help him much, because a lot of my work with, is with ExpressRoute in Azure, and he's actually doing, he's actually peering um, beyond ExpressRoute. He's actually peering on his VNets and in his virtual network gateways, which I have not done a lot of myself. But he has a great article here about some of the differences between AWS and Azure and about networking in general. And if you're worried about the cloud, trust me, there's still networking in the cloud. <laughs> so uh, good stuff there from, from Daniel. I really appreciate that. I hope to meet him at the... Cisco Live, if he's at Cisco Live, um, he, he'll be on my hit list, stalker list. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for tonight, folks. Again, I'm still just kind of riding this whole great, great job, SpaceX. Uh, if you did not get a chance to watch it live, uh, definitely check it out on YouTube. Watch us launch, plug your earphones in, turn the audio all the way up. It's just blast your, your brain. It's, it's a great experience. And next... Hopefully the next Falcon Heavy, I want to be there in person because it's like an hour from me. So anyway, uh, Friday Eve, we don't lab Friday night. I don't lab Friday nights, or at least not on stream. That's kind of a break from stream. We'll plan to be get back in here this weekend, and we'll be doing some QoS labs. Have a good evening. Thanks for the links. Uh, you're very welcome, Mark Miller. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Uh, good to see you. Hope you have a great weekend. Hope you have a great Friday at work. And we'll see you back here, see everyone back here in the Land Tamer stream this weekend. Have a great night.